So a special guest joining us here in the studio. We've talked to him a couple of times in the past. He is running for governor. His name is Bob Stefanowski. He always, he always brings me cool stuff to look at. So, so far, you've brought me Babe Ruth baseball. Yep. And I, I don't get to keep these, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> but he's, he's brought them to show me. Babe Ruth baseball, which, again, that's like the holy grail. And last week we were signed autograph, or last time uh, signed autograph Muhammad Ali. Yep. Uh, uh, punch uh, gloves. And then now today you got maybe the second holy grail is uh, Lawrence Taylor <laughs> Giants helmet, signed helmet. That's amazing. Yeah, that's one of my favorites. Babe Ruth baseball first, I think, and LT second. Yeah. yeah. The guy was amazing. Yeah. So you got a whole wall full of stuff? Is that the deal? Yeah, I've been doing it for 10, 15 yeah. years. The, the Babe Ruth baseball, though, I told you last time, was my midlife crisis. Oh, yeah. It was either that or buy, <laughs> buy a new car. A Corvette or a Babe Ruth ball? <laughs> yeah, got exactly. It. You made the right choice. I think you made the right, right choice. <laughs> So uh, you're in the news a lot because there are some things going on with your campaign and things going on with uh, the actual run for governor that may be a little bit out of normal sync. So you're not going to be involved at the convention. Can you tell everybody about that? Yeah, so there's two ways uh, to get on the ballot, on the uh, primary ballot, which is in August. One way is to go to the convention, which is up at the Foxwood Casino in May. Um, There's 1,400 delegates uh, throughout the state. And they will go up, and anybody who gets 15% of the support of those delegates, which is about 200, uh, is on the primary ballot. Um, I'm an outsider. For me, not being a politician, not having run before, um, this is really kind of an insider's game. And and don't get me wrong, these delegates do an amazing amount of homework. Uh, they're all committed people. But right. for an outsider who's not run before to try to go up there and get 200 votes is tough. Okay. Um, so I'm not going to do that. I'm going to go the alternate route, which is there's 450,000 Republicans in Connecticut. I'm going to go out and get signatures from 10,000 Republicans. Now, what that does for me is it shows the support across the state. Um, going into the primary, I've got 10,000 names, addresses of people that support me. Right. And it gives me the opportunity to make my case as an outsider to the broader public, which I think is a leg up uh, going into the primary. All right. So 10,000 signatures. Have you started that process already? We're started to build the field organization. You cannot start. You've got between May 1st okay. and June 15th to do it. But right. I got dozens of volunteers. We're training them. Um, I got a new pair of Nikes. I'm going to be out there <laughs> going from seven o'clock in the morning till midnight. And I just like it, Lee. It's a great way to go to the people. Right. I, personally, I think more people, 450,000 Republicans, should have input as to who's in the ballot. Right. Rather than, you know, getting a couple hundred sure. votes up in Foxwoods. I mean, you know, I, I'd rather have the broader support. All right. So how does that change? Does it change anything else? The dynamic, I mean, um, it means that you, I would, I think there's another one or two want to do it this way too, right? There's a couple other folks. Well, a lot of people have it as a backup, okay. right? If yeah. they don't get the 15%. Right. I, I didn't feel right going to, to delegates. And I've been going to RTCs for the last three months, and I've probably been to close to 100 of them. Right. I didn't feel right telling delegates, please, please, please vote for me right. um, when I knew I was going to go this route. Okay. I All think right, others, others are going to test the, the, the 20% if they don't get it. Um, they'll fall back on it. But I just wanted to be straightforward. I wanted to go directly to people and get it out there. Does that mean or does it change... Whether or not you can participate in debates, does it change any of that, or is that all the same? It does not. I mean, the other difference coming out of it, which we've talked about before, is I'm not taking the taxpayer money to fund my campaign. There's probably four, maybe five people that get out of the convention, and and each one of them is going to get $1.2 million of taxpayer money to run their campaign. As you know, i got a philosophical problem with that. Um, You know, running around with bumper stickers and yard signs saying we need to be more fiscally disciplined in Connecticut... And then in the next breath, taking $1.2 million of taxpayer money to do it, I, I'm not doing that. I'm yeah. funding it by taking donations across the state. Now you were talking a lot. That was one of the first things you actually were running on when you first came in here to talk yeah. about things was about the total amount of money that's going to be literally flushed down the toilet in a way. Because yeah. uh, I mean, what was it, $20 million bucks? It, up, it, Upwards of that, right? It could be 30 to $40 yeah. million. You've got on both sides of the alleys, you've got 32 candidates <laughs> right now. And part of the reason you do is... Fundraising is generally a filtering process, right? People that can't raise the money voluntarily drop out. Right here, if you've got the, you know, if you've got taxpayers paying for it, why drop out? Right, just kind of hang around. So there, there's no filtering process. See, a lot of people are concerned, I guess, about self funders, if you will, people who you know have come into the game with their own uh, bank account or checkbook, and I don't, I've never really understood that. Right, to me, you know, you've made a success out of your life, and you want to take time out of you know you want to do your thing 
and you're not asking people to give you a lot of money or money at all. They can do it right. if they like, but they don't have to. Right. And you're self-funding. I mean, listen, because they look at Linda McMahon or they look at the last candidates and they say to themselves, well, they were colossal disasters. But that was because the candidate was flawed, not necessarily because they had money, right? Yeah, listen, I, I, I'm a blue-collar guy, Lee. I told you during the break. My dad ran the scoreboard at the Yale Bowl for 40 years. I went to the North Haven Public High School. I got beat up every other week. <laughs> you know, you're a giant. I, you're like seven <laughs> feet tall. How's yeah. that possible? <laughs> yeah, but I was pretty thin at the time. You know, I, I worked hard. I went to the public schools. I got a big job at UBS where I was CFO of a $500 billion business right. over 35 countries. Uh, more people, one of the reasons I'm running is more people in Connecticut should have the opportunity that I did to, to be successful. And and if I can do that and, uh, you know, fund my campaign throughout the state and put some of my money in and not force taxpayers to pay for it, I'm going to do that all day long and I'm not going to be, I'm going to be proud of it. All right. Bob Stefanowski, by the way, is our guest. Your website, folks can go to it so we know. Bobforgovernor.com. All right. If you want to ask him a question, something I miss, we've got him to the bottom of the hour, 860-464-9490-631-317-1949. Let me take a very quick break. We'll come back. We'll talk about some of the issues. Bob Stefanowski is here with us in the studio. So we're back. Bob Stefanowski is with us here in the studio. See, Bob takes the time out, gets in his car, comes to the studio. Not everybody does that. I like that. Anyway, Bob is here with us. And we appreciate that. And again, we're talking about the process for, you know, by the time it's all said and done, how many folks will be running for governor. And uh, he's assured us that he's going to go out and get the signature. So he will be part, at least towards the end, of it could be three, four, five candidates by the time it's all said and done. So, uh, And you see Bob all the time. His television ads are on all the time, which is good. I see him just about every every day above my right shoulder. You pop up, which is good. Lee just told me during the break I look a lot better on TV than I do in person <laughs> at 7 o'clock in the morning. Well, you were telling me your wife says he keeps, keeps turning you off when you come yeah. on. You come on so she much. Was on, I was on last night. She's fast-forwarding through the commercial. I'm like, Amy, that's me. She said, Bob, I'm so tired of talking about you. <laughs> that's good. That's good. All right, let me ask you a couple of questions about some of the topics that yeah. are going on. Hard for the big bailout. Apparently, the legislators got duped. They think they got, they got tricked into this. I, again, I compare the public sector to the private sector. I, you know, when I was working at GE, and if I went to the CEO with an 800-page document at 11 o'clock at night and said you got five minutes to sign it, you know, for a forty billion dollars spend, I would have been thrown out of the room. So, to me, it's not amazing that this stuff happens. That in Clause Forty Two G. There's a word that allows these politicians to do something crazy. It just gets back to the process. All right, so how do you fix this? How do you fix Hartford? How do you fix Bridgeport? How do you fix these other places? Well, yeah, we're looking into the legalities of it, but I, I I will call a state of emergency my first week in office, and right. it's not because a hurricane's coming. It's because this state is in a state of fiscal emergency. Right. I would file Hartford for bankruptcy immediately. Uh, we're not going to get out from under it. We just guaranteed $500 million of Hartford debt at the state level. What happens, and I predicted it last week, they, they drop your debt rating, which makes your expenses more, your interest expense more. It is a death spiral in Hartford. Right. And until somebody comes up with a rational plan to get it through bankruptcy and get it out, it's not going to get any better. And throw in $250 million of taxpayer money at the problem every year without a plan is just not the way to go. Right. And he set a precedent now because, uh, like I said, Bridgeport wants money. Well, now you got to bail uh, them uh, out or and, somebody and, else wants money. And what money. you do, you end up incenting bad behavior because the towns that are well well financed and, and disciplined don't get any money. Right. And the ones that are wasting it get the money. It's crazy. There's also talk, obviously, that Malloy put this all together because his buddy Bronin <laughs> is, uh, is in charge of yeah. for that sinking ship, and he wants him to be the next governor. Uh, yeah, there's probably something to that, but I can't wait till November, Lee. Look at the candidates. Yeah. you got a mayor of a bankrupt city. you got a convicted felon. I'm sure you saw the debate last night. I did. Dragged this <laughs> I mean, you can't make it up. Yeah, she made the most sense out of all of them. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that was pretty funny, though, yeah. yeah. So... Um, we're talking again to Bob Stefanowski here with us in the studio. So switching from that to uh, tolls. We talk about tolls all the time. And it's just, a, it's just obviously it's another progressive tax at the citizens of the state. Don't we have money? So should we have money set aside already for, for roads and bridges? Isn't that part of what we pay in taxes? Well, we're supposed to have the gas tax that went into a lockbox. Now, why the government needs a lockbox to do what they say they're going to do with the money to begin with is crazy. Right. And then they, they raid the lockbox. So I could go on for 20 minutes as to why these tolls are a bad idea. Um, but you can't put them near the borders because you lose the federal funding from the highways. 
uh, what you're going to end up with is it's all on every exit. Otherwise, right. people will avoid it. It'll be a 500 to to $1,000 bill that everybody gets every month, just like another utility bill. And you can't trust the government to use it to fix the roads and bridges. Right. I mean, it's scary sure. that it's this close to passing. I, I didn't think it would get this far. And now you've got also what they're, they're talking about, congestion. I don't know what the term is. Off congestion the top of prices. Congestion prices, right? Yeah. yeah. So if it's 5 o'clock and you've got to get home to work to watch, your, or you got to get home because your kid's got a Little League game, yeah. uh, you're going to have to take 95, and 95 from point A to point B happens to be where you got to drive. It's 17 bucks to go home during it's, the rush it, hour. It, it's crazy. crazy. It's absolutely... When are, we gonna, when are the Democrats going to realize by just putting in that next tax it's not going to change anything? How many right. times, all the way back to Lowell Weicker in, in you know, 91, if you let me have this temporary income tax, things will be fine. They don't have any credibility right. anymore. So we need someone with a plan. I'll just give the quick plug to bobforgovernor.com. I got a plan endorsed by Art Laffer to lower taxes, to get this economy moving, reduce regulation, put in term limits for these government employees. You know, these, these should not be jobs for life, including the governor. We got to turn it around, Lee, but we need somebody with pragmatic business spirit that's run things before. Right, and it's Bob with the number four or the the F O R. He almost stumped me on that one. F O R. Bob for Governor. Check that. Out. All right. So, also, so tolls again. Not only does it obviously hurt the people who are driving, but if I have to go across town to my favorite restaurant, and I know that the toll is going to cost me another nine bucks or twelve yeah. bucks by the time I'm back and forth, I might not go out to eat. I might not go buy sneakers. I might not go to a store. That is across town because, you know what, I don't want to pay those tolls. I think it's got that ripple in the pond effect. Exactly. We need to start putting more money in people's pockets rather than taking more away and giving it to the knuckleheads up in Hartford that just do whatever they want with it. Right. That's our money. It is our money. Now, there was a big rally in Hartford. I don't know if you got a chance to see how many. It was like a couple thousand people there, but a lot of people are passionate about their Second yeah. Amendment. Yeah. Well, listen, I, I think it was a great event. George, who's here with me, went. Um, I called Scott Wilson last week at my daughter's spring concert at her college, so I couldn't go. But I think it's terrific. I think we got to focus on mental health, Lee. This governor persecutes, you know, law-abiding gun owners who are doing nothing wrong when the real problem is getting the guns out of the hands that people should not have them. Right. And there's no focus on mental health. That's where it needs to be. To come out and call the NRA terror, I mean, it's just crazy what this guy does. There are a lot of great people that have gone through the background checks that are doing nothing wrong. It's going after the mental health aspect. That's what I'm going to do as governor. Any chance, though, you would you would never, let's say, waver with the idea of you, you wouldn't go after magazine clip sizes and uh, types of weapons. I mean, that's all. We have the toughest well, going. We've already got are... the most restrictive in, in, in the country. I don't think we need right. to be any more restrictive. If a new bill got to my desk, I'd look at it. I think it's unlikely, given the composition in the House and the Senate, that right. we're going to get a new bill, but I would certainly look at it. Again, it needs to be more of a focus on mental health. Yeah. We already got the toughest the toughest laws in the nation. Bob Stefanowski is here with us in the studio. A couple more minutes left with him. We're going to run out of time. But I wanted to ask you, you know, honesty is, I think, what people crave, right? So, you, you know, you get politicians, and they're caught and trapped in lies. They're trapped in tr- trying to excuse their way out of a situation that they've been in. And it's always going to be the best policy just to tell people the truth from the start. To let, let them just sort of judge you on who you actually are, Right. I agree, Lee. I mean, I just told you I got beat up in high school. How much (laughs) more honest can I be than that? But seriously, when I go to an RTC, I come out of it saying, this is a normal guy who's been very successful, who seems pretty smart, that's not going to give me a lot of bull. He's going to go in there. And I'm not worried about the next election, Lee. I I have no desire to be in Washington. If I'm a one-term governor, that's fine. But if you're one of these politicians and your primary objective is to get reelected, you're not going to make the hard decisions, which is exactly what Malloy and Bronin and all these guys are doing. We need somebody. We also need somebody that's run something big. The state of Connecticut is a $40 billion biannual budget. Right. I ran a $500 billion company. It's 10 times the size. Right. We need somebody who's done it before. He's going to come in here and be tough and not be worried about getting reelected and doing the right thing for the economy and, and everybody else in the state. How important is it to surround yourself with good people? Too? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. It's number one. And I like to have diverse people around me. I don't hire a bunch of, you know... Guys from New Haven that I grew up with, you right. need a diversity opinion. But then as importantly, you got to be able to make the tough decision. The debate's over, ladies and gentlemen. Here's what we're doing. Get on board. And, and, and Lee, I'm going to do it. Let these guys come at me when I'm governor. Let them come at me. I don't care. Let them sue me. Let them do whatever they want. But I, I'm going to do the right thing for this state. 
Now, when it comes time for you actually to run, we're running out of time, but you, you will take part in the uh, the debates when that comes all comes about, correct? Yeah, when we get to the, when the field narrows and there's Republican debates, I will be there. I debated Dan Drew, the, the Democratic mayor out of Middletown. He left the race three weeks later. Right. I'm up for a good fight, Lee, but I, I'm waiting for the field to narrow to who I'm actually going to be running against, right. and I will be in the primary. A lot of folks, certainly the higher tier folks in the Republican Party, think that this whole process with the debates with 12 and 15 people up on stage has been a colossal waste of time in some cases. I, I mean, I, again, I haven't got a chance to see any of them from the start to finish because you never know when they are yeah. until it's like halfway in, in the middle of it and you click yeah. on the, But I mean, a lot of folks are probably in, in on board with what you're saying. Put it, look at this way. I make a decision every debate. I've never looked back and said, I wish I was at that one. Right. You know, because the other <laughs> problem is there, some of these Republicans are coming after each other yeah. and we shouldn't be doing it Republican to Republican right now. Right. And it breaks down. Right. Bob Stefanowski, your website again? BobforGovernor.com. F-O-R. 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 <laughs> All right, buddy. Thank you. Thanks, Lee. And thanks for See showing me the uh, LT helmet. <laughs> no problem. I gotta, I'm going to post the picture It wouldn't fit your head. No. I'm going to tell your listeners. I'm I not a, sure what that says. I got a giant head. <laughs> I got a giant melon. <laughs> thanks, Bob.